Next, we're going to discuss how to build software projects in a reproducible way. But before we do this, it's useful to quickly review how to actually call a compiler. And because the core programming language of the Unix environment is C, I'm introducing here the C compiler. So let's write a trivial C program, just two lines, uh, namely printf hello world and return with a success value. And if we call, for example, the GNU C compiler GCC, then you feed in on the command line uh, the source code hello.c and you say what the output file is going to be because otherwise you get the uh, default output file name a.out. So we want to have a nicer name like hello. So we specify minus o hello. And then this produces an executable file and we can start it by just writing dot slash hello because the dot slash is needed because presumably the dot directory is not included in your path. <coughs> so the compiler accepts both source files directly, uh, which in C end with .c, or object files where an individual .c file has already been translated into an object file, um, but has not yet been linked together into the final executable file format, for example, ELF on Linux. And um, you, with the option minus O, it produces the ELF binary, uh, whereas with option minus C, you can translate a C file into a .o file. And then later you can, as a faster step, compile all these .o files or link all these .o files together into the executable. So if you have a thousand .c files, you want to do this intermediate step such that if one of these C files changes, you don't have to recompile all the uh, .o files, uh, only the one that actually has changed. Um, <clears throat> you normally uh, want to switch on some of the diagnostic facilities available in the compiler. So there is a minus W to switch on standard warnings and a minus W all to switch on additional warnings. Contrary to the name of the option, W all doesn't actually switch on all op all possible warnings. There are lots more available listed in the manual. Um, you can switch an optimizer on and you can tell the optimizer whether to optimize for space or for speed. Um, you can have different optimization levels and you can ask for the inclusion of debugging information such that the debugger has access to symbol names, what is a variable at a certain location called, and line numbers, which assembler code uh, relates to which line number in the source code. If you have compiled uh, your binary with option minus G, then it becomes much more easy to use with a debugger. And the debugger can be uh, used in two modes. The debugger I mentioned here is GDB, the GNU debugger that comes with the GNU C compiler. Um, you can start the binary inside the debugger. Um, so you just provide the name of the binary as an argument to the GDB command. And then inside the debugger, you start the command with R. After the R, you can provide command line arguments to the binary. And before you uh, run the binary, you can first, for example, set some breakpoints where the debugger should halt the execution or some watch points where the debugger should uh, output some value or evaluate some expression each time uh, a memory cell has been written into. You can, <clears throat> uh, this form of invoking the debugger is if you know at the start of the process that you want to debug, but sometimes you have used a program, you didn't intend to debug it, but it started to misbehave and then you decided you want to debug it. And this is known as post-mortem analysis, looking at a dead body, so to speak. And what you need for that is a core file. Um, the 
unless it has been specifically disabled, the kernel will write a core file um, that contains the entire RAM content of the process at the time it died. And a core file is written uh, if a process ends because it received a signal, for example, it had a uh, an so-called segmentation violation if it tried to access a piece of memory outside the allocated address range or if it tried to do a division by zero or um, something else that the CPU complained about. Uh, you can also press uh, control uh, backslash in order to send a sick quit signal and that also will um, trigger a core dump. And to enable core dumps, you need to raise the with the ulimit command the size of the maximum process size that will produce a, a core dump. This is there is this limit such that your hard disk doesn't get filled with uh, core dumps from a very large process. And then you provide to GDB both the binary that you started, because from there you will get the debug symbols, which may not actually have been loaded into memory, and core, where you see the program counter, the registers, and the, all the data structures in RAM, uh, the various stack frames, and so on. Some of the most common commands to quickly remember for using GDB with BT backtrace you can print the current stack so you can see the nested list of function calls that have been in execution at the time of the uh, halting the process. There's a print command with P. You can print arbitrary uh, C expression. So there's a little C interpreter built into the uh, debugger to allow you to use the full expression syntax of C uh, where you can not only look at the value of variable names, but you can dereference pointers and array indices and all these things. On the stack, uh, the uh, namespace that you are uh, referring to in these uh, expressions, whose local variables are you looking at, depends on in which particular stack frame you are at the moment. And with the up and down command, you can move between the different functions that have been listed in the backtrace and the stack backtrace as currently being active. And then with the B command, you can set a breakpoint at a specified line or function, so just provide a line number or file name colon line number um, instead of the dot dots here, or provide the name of a function. And with R, you start the program and you can provide command line arguments. And then you can either single step or you can uh, continue until the next uh, source code lines. So if you <clears throat> if you continue until the next source code line with the stepping command, you will step over function calls. Whereas if you use the n command, you will actually follow function calls. So each time you see a function call, you have to make a decision whether you want to single step through the function itself or just skip over it. If you start uh, you can also start GDB within Emacs. There is an escapex GDB command, and then it opens. Uh, you, you can see a, a pointer, for example, indicating the current line where the debugger is uh, in single step mode um, in, in your actual source code and numerous other uh, IDEs, integrated development environments, have similar debugging function. Uh, Visual Studio Code, for example, is at the moment a one that has recently become quite popular. 